get this to work. There we go. I'm supposed to have a magic button that does all kinds of things for me when I go live, and that damn magic button is clearly not working quite the way it's supposed to be. Good morning, party people. It's been a hot minute since we've done one of these live uh, over on Twitch. Uh, I was out on a cruise for about a week and a half, did a Panama Canal cruise, and uh, recorded most of or all my office hours during that time. Like every couple of days, I would record one in a different port. The way that I do that is that I have the same camera gear, the same stuff that I use here in the office. I uh, have a separate camera that I bring along with me and shoot sometimes. Good morning, Kansas uh, 4444. Um, have a tripod set up and all that wireless microphone that I bring with me when I go places. Um, and then that way just gives you all a little bit of a change of scenery when I go through and do these office hours. I've also been uploading these to TikTok. Uh, Eve has actually been chopping these up, editing them, putting one question at a time out on TikTok. So that's kind of fun, too, because I, I always struggle with, like, how am I supposed to do content for TikTok? Uh, I, I don't know of a really good way to make database stuff like fun and catchy and addictive, uh, whereas just chopping up these office hours questions really tends to work pretty well. So let's go take a look and see what y'all have. Oh, I've got to have, uh, let's see here, set up my now showing uh, or my little recorder there. Um, so let's see the top voted question. Oh, SQL Pilot says, good morning. Good morning, uh, SQL Pilot. Top voted question is, hi, Brent, I want to become a full-fledged database architect. I've been reading and practicing a lot of stuff, but I don't have a certain path. Can you guide me on a proper path? So the problem with that question is, what's a database architect? Because it means different things to different people and to different companies. In some companies, database architect, like I'll take a software as a service company. Imagine that you work for a payroll company. The database architect at the payroll company makes long ranging decisions on where they should put new parts of data. Should they put it in SQL Server? Should they put it in a, a graph database? Should they keep it in a caching layer? Should they put some in NoSQL? The data model doesn't change much over time, but the places where new data goes may go slightly off into different data stores, and they've got to coordinate, they've got to make decisions long term about which data stores are right for them, uh, which how they tr uh, pick out training for the developers to go learn that new data store, uh, but the data model itself doesn't change very dramatically. Now, another company's definition of database architect might be a giant car development company, let's say you work for General Motors or Renault or whatever, and you're an architect there and you're having to work with lots of different applications and you're asking questions or answering questions around, say, compliance or security. How do we design which data goes in different places and how do we control that data? There's no one job art description that I've seen that really is database architect. So rather than saying, I want to have a job that I don't have today, and what, how should I prepare for it? What you want to do is look at what your company needs in terms of data architecture, and then plan what you need to do in order to manage that. If you're working for a really small company that doesn't have a lot of architecture needs, you probably aren't going to be able to segue your way into database architect. What you're probably going to have to do is go to work for a much larger company with either a lot of databases or a lot of developers and work your way up to database architect from there instead. But it's not just a training thing. Uh, CR Dodia? CR Dodia, good morning uh, or good afternoon over in Wales. I missed uh, SQL Bits. SQL Bits was over in Wales uh, this time around, but it was just in a location that I just didn't didn't really want to go to. It was a whole lot of travel work coming over from Las Vegas to get over to that one particular area. Then once I got there, there really wasn't a whole lot to see, so I ended up skipping SQL Bits this time around. I'll definitely be back over the uh, next time they do SQL Bits in either London or if they do it in a place that I've always wanted to go to, something like a Cambridge, for example. <laughs> Eagle Coder says, hi, Brent, you're the best. I still have a hard time calling myself a guru or anything like that. You know, some people say you're the best. I'm like, oh, no, I'm, I'm pretty bad. I'm actually pretty terrible. It's just that I uh, share a lot of stuff online. So people think I know stuff when I often don't. 
Next up, we have uh, Exciting and New says, Hi, Brent. What's your opinion on the practice of inserting SQL comments into requests as tags to allow DBAs to track the requests in the server? If you're doing it, there's nothing wrong with it. I love the idea of doing it. If you're asking it from the perspective of how do I force everyone to do this, I don't think that's going to happen. Because the problem is it's almost impossible to do it in stuff like ORMs, stuff like Entity Framework, and Hibernate, Dapper. It makes it really hard to edit the SQL queries directly without a whole lot of work. So in theory, it's awesome. If you can do it, that's great. In practice, it's pretty tough to get everybody to get on board and sign off on that. Next up, we have DGW in OKC says, what is your opinion on the practice of a manager who consistently assigns DBA tasks to an employee who is marginally proficient at DBA work and is not really that interested in this discipline anyway? Let me tell you what, I think you're fishing for me to pass, pass judgment on a manager. It sounds like you want to put your hand up my butt and tell me what to say. It sounds like you're going to play this video in front of a manager and say, see, Brent doesn't agree with you. So let me give you a few answers that may kind of challenge what you think. What if the manager has no other options? What if the manager doesn't have a way to get the DBA tasks done by someone good? What if the manager needs to train this person in order to become a number two? Because what if they have a really good DBA, but the manager is worried that that DBA is going to leave? And I'll give you a really weird one. What if the manager is trying to fire that person? What if the manager says, I know what, this person isn't going to be at this company very much longer anyway, but I want to give them some job skills so that they can survive on their own, something that they can have on their resume so that when we let them go, because they do suck really bad, at least they've got some experience that they might be able to use to get to the next job. Or what if they're good DBA, and I should use that in air quotes, what if their good DBA isn't as good as they think? Or what if that good DBA can't get work done on a timely basis? There are all kinds of reasons why what's described here is totally legit. What you want to do is you want to go to your manager and say, help, help me understand, it seems like often these tasks go to this employee why are we doing that? And then maybe express to them why you don't want that to happen. Is it that you want the work and you're not able to get assigned it? Why don't you go ask for that? Say, I'd love to be uh, doing more database administration tasks, for example, if maybe that's it. So hopefully that helps. Next up, Fajola asks, SP Blitz, shows, or SP Blitz First shows the top expensive query of a type. It's unclear which app or stored procedure is generating this query. What's the best way to track down the app generating the query or statement? So SQL Server doesn't track which app ran a query after it finishes. The same database engine that works for you has to work for sites like Stack Overflow that are maybe doing 20,000, 50,000, 100,000 queries per second. SQL Server couldn't possibly track all the apps that ever ran a query because after all, multiple applications may run the same query. What you probably want to do is catch it live while it's running. So SP Blitz Who is good for that. That shows you which queries are active right now. SP Who is active is another way to do that. With both of those, you can log those to a table. And then from there, you can go back over time if, you're, if there's a particular query you're interested in. Uh, Chechko says a good developer has, a lot, has to know a lot about persistent memory. So go on and learn that stuff. When you say persistent memory, I'm not sure what you mean by that. If you mean persistent RAM, like PMEM chips, I don't believe at all that anyone needs to learn about that because that technology is dead on arrival. It makes no sense in the cloud. Uh, and anything that doesn't make sense in the cloud is not going to catch on too well on premises these days. Um, if you mean, this is the database on hard drive, now you're really dating yourself because people have been putting databases on magnetic hard drives in five years? I mean, magnetic hard drive's been a bad idea for quite a while. So maybe stop lecturing 
and start tuning in to learn. Uh, thumbs up, Joe says, good morning, Brent. Good morning, uh, thumbs up, Joe, as well. Next up, we have Chris. Chris says, have you ever had manually created statistics be either a root cause or a final push that needs to, that you needed in order to get across the finish line? For me, never. But here's the thing. There are people that I know who I trust who do a really good job at their job doing the same kind of thing that I do. And they have used this to get across the finish line. So I think there are cases where it makes sense. It's just extremely rare. Uh, it isn't something, if I had to say I've been doing this for, you know, what, more than a decade now. God, like two decades. Oh, God, I'm old. Uh, but it, it isn't something that I use very commonly ever. Uh, so just that may help steer your knowledge and training on that one. Next one, CKI says, how do I get the history of which queries ran the most recently with their username? And auditing is not an option. Hmm. So how do I do something when the feature that's designed to do it isn't an option? I would go back to the business and say, SQL Server has a feature that does exactly what you want. You need this feature. If you can't use this feature, tell me why. Because anything that I'm going to roll myself is going to have a way higher overhead than the part that's built into SQL Server. People might tell you to start a profiler trace or an extended events trace. Those will be higher overhead than just using auditing. Use auditing. That's what it's there for. Next up, Peter asks, do you have a recommended method for adding notes to an index for about why it's needed or which application uses it? Yes. One of my favorite tricks for this is to put the JIRA issue number or whatever help desk issue number you use, GitHub issue numbers, whatever. Put that as the name of the index, like column A underscore column B underscore GitHub issue one, two, three, four. So that way, when you're looking at the index, you can say, oh, this must be related to GitHub issue 1234. You go open up GitHub, pull that issue number, and then you can see the scenario that uh, caused you to create that index and maybe whether or not that index is still needed. I use that all the time. Next up, Perplexed asked, what are your thoughts on using persist sample percent to force all future update stats to use a specific sampling? I just started using this on a very large table that wasn't getting stats right after updating the stats. I have never used that. I don't have a problem with it. I have never used it, but the reason that I haven't ever used it is that I usually have people update stats on a scheduled basis so that we don't have to worry about auto-update auto update stats tripping. If you're in a situation where you're worried about auto-update stats tripping, odds are you're either not doing stats maintenance frequently enough or the table's contents roll through so fast that you probably can't afford to do full scan because it's going to be pop firing off so often and breaking execution plans so often and doing full scans of the table so often. If you want to learn more about that, go on YouTube, search for Brent Ozar Statistics, and we have a whole course on statistics and how they work totally for free, all available on YouTube. It was originally done by Doug Lane, has all kinds of good stuff in there that explains uh, how you should think about updating stats and how you might not need to update them quite as often, or maybe even turn off auto-update stats altogether. Next up, Uncle Fester asks, I'm running a select count star with SQL using an index, returning only 47 million rows. Can I trust select star or select count star to return all the rows? Uncle Fester, I, I would want to see more about the execution plan. So first off, if you're doing 95 million rows and you're doing a select star, seriously, you're going to paint 95 million rows in a result set? No, you're not, Uncle Fester. Count star? Really? On a 95 million row table? Why? Why do you need an exact count inside of there? But then furthermore, I would want to see what the query actually is in the execution plan on it, because I don't think something's right with you there. In more ways than one. 
And then we'll do one more. Uh, Rojo asks, debate uh, rages here about what login to use for security, Active Directory versus SQL. Is either of them more secure? The thing that's nice about Active Directory logins is that you can shut them off centrally or change their password centrally, and it takes effect instantly no matter how many SQL servers you have. For that reason, I prefer Active Directory. It's not that it's inherently more secure, it's just that when all hell breaks, off, hell breaks loose, you can shut it off really quickly. Whereas if you have SQL logins scattered all over the place, that's a whole lot more work. In either case, my bigger concern for which one is more uh, secure is where we keep the passwords. Because most of the time when I see people keeping passwords, it's all over the place embedded in config files. It's not encrypted in any way. Everybody knows what it is. They log in with that password in SQL Server Management Studio, in on production when they need to make emergency fixes. That's the bigger concern for me rather than the method of authentication. All right, that wraps it up for this morning. I actually have to go over on to bringatrailer.com because my Jaguar XKRS hardtop is going up for auction this morning, starting this morning. Um, so I'm up to seven cars. <laughs> Well, that escalated quickly. I'm up to seven cars and I have a three-car garage, so that represents a little bit of a problem. Now, I'm kind of lucky in that right now the Ferrari is being restored out in the Mojave Desert, but it's probably a month or so away from being finished, at which point I'm going to need a spot for it here at the house. Then also, I just bought a Porsche 356, a 1964 one that sat in a garage for 20 years, hasn't run in 20 years. That one also went off to mechanics in order to get restored, but I'm going to need a spot for that one as well. So I'm putting a couple of my cars up for auction, put the Jaguar XKRS hardtop up for auction because I bought the convertible version instead, and I adore the convertible version. It's magical. Uh, and then I'm also putting the Range Rover up for auction as well. I love love the Range Rover, but uh, originally got it so that Eve could learn to drive. Eve is from China, has great mass transit back in China, never needed a driver's license. Um, so she originally expressed interest in uh, getting a driver's license, so I got that so that she could uh, have kind of a tank and run stuff over in case uh, she got into trouble. Uh, but decided not to get a driver's license after all, so that one needs to go because I don't need another spare car around here. So. Now I get to go watch on Bring a Trailer and go answer questions about uh, uh, what's going on with the car, or what its maintenance history is, or anything like that. So that'll be fun. See what people uh, bid it up to. Fingers crossed. Wish me luck. And I will see y'all on the next Office Hours. Adios. I have a magic button that's supposed to stop the stream. I don't think it's going to work. It didn't work. Ha 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 So to do it, let's play the outro music. 